and, and I'm gonna ask you to pick up, but what's your name? Daryl. Daryl? Yeah. D-A-R-R-E-L-L? Uh-huh. What's your last name? Tom. T-H-O-M-A-S? Uh-huh. Are you from Memphis? Yeah. And how old are you? 54. 54. And you were saying um, that it's important for you to be, being disabled, it's important for you to be able to come to something like this because it's harder for you to get around. Well, I can come to one spot and get a lot of things done that I need to be getting done. But since you're in a, kind of in a situation where you're without housing, this here helps the homeless people as well as, 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 as me and people by me being in a wheelchair because they can find, they, just about find every location or get the information to find a place to get the help that they need. Right. Uh, how long you been uh, homeless? Uh, right now for about, since I got evicted from the Madison Tower. And since you got evicted? From the Madison Tower. Okay. And by how long ago was that? Or? Uh, the end of March. End of March. Got evicted for calling a, a code enforcement on the building for not having air conditioning on the southwest end of the building. And you got kicked out for that? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, when you call code enforcement on them, they find a lot of other infractions, building infractions and stuff. Then the, the owner, property owners got to spend, in, spend in money immediately to try to, to bring those infractions up to date. Right. Then you by you being the one that call and they come to your apartment and ask for you specifically, then you go on the target list. So the manager had to refuse my rent to get me behind in order for me to be evicted. That don't sound right. No, it don't sound right. It's a slick way of doing slum lord eviction. What do you um what do you do for a living when you when you're able to? I mean obviously uh, when I had my limbs I was a carpenter and a mechanic. How long ago did you lose your limbs? I lost my right leg 2003 and my left leg around 2010. Okay. Uh, is that work related or I'm working or? on a car on the side of the street with my uh, right leg and with my left leg with just a spider in my shoe. Wow. That's, yeah, that'll do it. Um, when was the last time I saw you uh, over there getting an eye exam? When was the last time you had an eye exam? Uh, right before I got evicted out of the Madison Town. Okay. So being able to come to something like this and and get these services done, you know, is is helpful for you. Yeah. Um, what it, I was talking with someone else here a little while ago. Obviously, a lot of folks don't hear from people who are not inside a home. Uh, well, that's because most people that got a home don't want to be bothered with the people without a home. Or, they feel like the person that's living out here in these streets or uh, uh, currently homeless is, is, is there because it's something that they want to do. It's not because they, it's something that they want to do. They're there because certain circumstances in life have placed them in that state. state. But the person that's with a home and doing good don't realize something. If you don't, they don't hear you don't realize, they can get to where that homeless person is a lot quicker than that homeless person can get to where they is. Are they just one mistake away from being homeless themselves? Do you feel like that's true for most people? That's true for the president. <laughs> he wants one mistake one, away. One bad break. Yeah. And yes. you can come falling, tumbling down off your high horse. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be times where I didn't feel like I, I could ever sleep in a shelter or, or, or even, even ask nobody for help. And then, you know, it's a God can place you in a circumstance or in a situation that you got to have for help or, or you got to, you're got going to have to receive it whether you want it or not. What's one thing that most of us, going to keep it 100 with me, including me, don't understand about your everyday life that, that, that something I might take for granted that you like, bro, you don't understand how valuable that is. What's one of those things for you? Well, a lot of people think... I take my situation as a big joke because I try to laugh all the time, but they don't realize something. I try to laugh all the time to keep from crying all the time. It's one big problem after another being with, just going to, from a transition of can do what you want to do to you got to do, do certain things that you want to do a different way that you want to do than the way that you're used to doing. Like I get up in the morning, I'm used to getting up, putting, my, putting one leg on at a time. Mm -hmm. Put one foot in the fan leg at a time. I got to get up in the morning and just put a knee in the fan leg. Right. So it's a lot of things that when you become handicapped or you be a, a, 
become homeless or in a situation, there's a lot of things that plays an effect on that person's mind that the uh, people that ain't in that position don't understand. It. The reason they say they want to be there, and they ain't trying to do nothing about it. That's because they ain't the one that got to live through those circumstances. Right. You see, if they were living through those exact same circumstances, the question is, to, they would have to ask themselves, do I want to fight through this circumstance or do I just want to die? And I guarantee a lot of them that, that got it, then lose it, a lot of them ain't going to want to live through it. Man, well, I feel like I could talk to you for a while. Um, <laughs> but I got to get back on I understand, here. I understand. Anything I hadn't asked you that you'd just like to share? Man, some of these folks that got out, that they able to help, they just try, try to find a way to help some of these places that help the home. Mm -hmm. These people ain't out here for themselves. They ain't out here because they were choked. They wants to be out here. Some some bad circumstances in their life brought them here. Right. And what they can ask themselves, if that circumstance is going to be my circumstance the next time something bad happens. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it.